Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com where I do what I think is fun. I've been doing some videos on a grandfather clock. This is a, essentially a bonus video. Uh, it's, it's not one of the, uh, I have actually four videos on uh, servicing a clock and oiling a clock and setting up a clock as well as regulating and, and setting a clock and beat and essentially do the whole setup. But I had a viewer say, how in the world do you get the chains in and out of, of one of these clocks? Uh, it's, uh, it's tricky and I wanna cover that with this video. Uh, so this is bonus video on clocks. Uh, it's, this is for chain driven clocks. Of course, this doesn't apply to wind up clocks nor does it apply to uh, cable driven clocks, but either one, two or three chain driven clocks is what this is for. It's easiest to do this job if you can take the mechanism, this, this, out of the clock, uh, like I do, but it can be done inside the clock because there are access panels on either side of a grandfather clock for doing things inside like oiling and, and putting the chains on and off. Uh, the reason you'd want to chain, do a chain. Sometimes the chains, they get locked in, a, in a too high of a position and people have to get them out. Uh, sometimes they, you have to service the clock and you want to take the mechanism out, so you want to take the chains out. Uh, sometimes the chains get tarnished and you want to replace it. Sometimes the links get stretched and it's causing, um, uh, causing problems with it keeping, uh, actually functioning and you want to replace the chains. You can buy uh, replacement chains from clock parts uh, uh, sellers online. Uh, so those are the reasons you'd want to do it, and, and this is kind of how to get that chain back in. First of all, of course, you want to start off by taking off the pendulum. You know, leave, you know, actually, I should start off by taking off the weights because they're up front. So you just simply un, you just lift up the weight with your hand. Make sure you're wearing gloves. I like to wear neoprene gloves, but you can wear cotton gloves. Lift them up, unhook them, and set them aside uh, where they can't roll off a table or something. And I'll show you uh, later on how to identify where they go back. Once, you're, once you have uh, your weights off, you want to take the pendulum off. It just unhooks from the back, and then it comes out the front of the clock. And then if you have gongs, like I do, I have metal gongs that hang down. Uh, they're not here right now, uh, but you would want to unhook those and take those out too. And once those are all done, you'd be left with just the chains. Uh, and then uh, to get them out, uh, you simply open up one of the links with a couple, uh, couple of pliers, and then pull the chain through, if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, and I'll show that here at the bench in a second. And then I'll show uh, the reverse of that uh, and, and a little trick to make it work. So let's go to the bench. So these are the weights. Now you would start with them actually in your clock uh, because, well, you need to get, unless you, even if you have a broken chain, you want to take the weights out so that you can change the chains. And so you got to get them out. Uh, they come labeled. As you can see, I have really old labels on mine. I actually updated the labels uh, with, a, with a printer. Uh, and, and that's on the bottom, so you can never see it anyway. Uh, make sure you wear gloves when you start working on your clock, always. Uh, most people use like a cotton glove, but I like to just use these Neo Premium, whatever. Uh, and don't mix them up because they are different weights. I've read that a lot of clocks, the right weight is the heaviest weight because it's what drives uh, the quarterly chime mechanism if you have a three, if you have a three uh, gear train clock. They break it up into quarterly chime drive chain drive gears, and then you have the time drive gears. They're separate gears, actually, and of course a weight. And then this one is the one on the very far left is just for the hourly chime gear train, and it is the lightest because it it just you know it it's running only once an hour, and not running anything but a single hammer. This is running the time, so a little bit more of a uh, torque it needs, and. Uh, to last the length of time for a week because these usually get set every week and then this one uh, being the heaviest because it has to run those hammers every quarter hour uh, and the weightness nor normally this is just the heaviest one is how the way you go and then sometimes these are the same weight uh, but in my clock I've weighed them this is about eight pounds eleven and a half pounds and fourteen and a half pounds so if you do mix them up or don't have your labels that might help you get them in order and that's the reason why they're in that order now, this, I got one chain here because I'm demonstrating how to take the chain off. And it essentially just has a little hook. And it just unhooks and you take the weight and you put it someplace safe where it won't roll off a table or something. Uh, let's move this and get on to the chain work. Now, uh, if you want to replace the chains and or take the clock out for service and back where the chains have, you've broken a link and you've fixed it, but now you have to get the chain back on. Uh, you do have to take these ends off. Now, one's a hook. 
it's got a hook for going on the weight and the other it's just a little pull tab. I have seen some where there is no pull tab or, the, or there's a hook on both sides. Uh, the, the key thing is, is that the hook goes on the side of the, uh, of the ratcheting side, so essentially when it ratchets it, it can ratchet up. Uh, so which the direction that the, uh, that the sprocket uh, for the, uh, uh, the sprocket for the wind up can go in that direction. That's the side the weight has to be on. And I say take them both off because you don't want to get these, these tabs hung up inside your mechanism. And you have to take this one off to get the chain through if it's on, and you have to take this one off to get it through if the chain is already off because you'll feed in the tail. And being the chain, is doesn't really matter what direction the chain goes. It matters what side these tabs are on. Take both tabs off now. Right when you take the weights off, take both tabs off. That way, you just put the tabs back on uh, where the weights go when you're done. Now, to do that, it's best to use a, a two players of pliers. They don't have to be curved like mine is. But it just, you know, you can have two needle noses, that's fine. Um, I like to use something that's smooth teeth-wise so that you don't mar up anything here. Now, you don't have to do the very one here. You could do any, any link in here. You could break any link. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I tend to do just one. I'm just going to grab a hold of the first link. And you really just, as long as you can give it a little bit of a sideways twist, that tends to be best. See if I can get on camera there for you. So I get in there, give it a little bit of a sideways twist. That tends to be the best. I don't know why I'm being so gentle. I normally just really go at it and make a real wide opening. And then we should be able to take that off. And now, see, you end up with you end up with the, the hook or whatever the tab is and then one link. And that you put aside uh, and you're left with a clean chain for feeding up through the clock. We'll repeat that with the other side. Once again, the chain is not directional, so you can do this for either one. Get in there. I'll be a little more aggressive this time. So I get, get it done in one try. And there. Set those aside. And now we've got to get the chain fed through our mechanism. Or first you'd pull it through if you were trying to get it off. And you just pull it through the direction it ratchets. And then you're ready to put your new chain on if that's what you're doing. So depending on whether you have a one, two, or three uh, chain driven uh, clock, this might be a little different. But on a three chain driven clock, the outside sprockets rotate in. So they rotate down from the outside to the inside. That's how they ratchet. So that's the direction you have to load. So listen, we'll show that. This one ratchets, I'm reaching in and ratcheting it. The middle one for the time ratchets in the same direction as the right. Uh, so it's going to ratchet this way. Oh, I better check that. Yeah, it ratchets this direction. It ratchets in the same direction as the right. Um, so what that means is we have to fish, the, the, the cable has to fit, or the, the chain has to fish up and then down in this side. And this one has, you have to feed the cable up the outside and down. And the center one, you have to, get, you have to finish it up and around the inside. Let's take a look at what the sprocket looks like. So this is looking at the left side, um, and this is the, essentially the, the, the mechanism that's ratcheting, that's holding your weight and driving the gear train. And this is the, watch the direction it moves when I push on it. See, it'll ratchet one way, it will not ratchet the other way. The other way is the direction the weight is pulling on. So the direction it ratchets it is the direction we want to feed it in and, and then put that little tab on. The direction you can't ratchet it is the direction we want to put the hook on so that it so the weight is pulling down on this and adding power you can even see as i push down with my finger it starts to power the clock and uh, that's what we'll do on all of these so to get the chain through the best thing is to get a piece of 18 gauge stranded wire and put a little hook on one side and make it about this big and the object is to put it up through the opposite direction of the ratcheting hook your chain on and then pull it back through you can do this inside the clock uh, it's harder because you can't get to the mechanisms as easy, but because you can take the side panels off, most clock, all grandfather clocks have a side access panel for oiling and doing this type of work. You can do that on either side. You can take off. It's just that there's going to be more wood and stuff in the way, so it's going to be a little bit harder to see and use your hands, but it can be done. So first I'll show how I get it up through, and I'm only going to show doing one. Well, actually, I'll show doing this the left side in the center, but the, the right side is just the center. The only, there's only one tricky part about the center. 
And so on the left side, you can actually see the wire coming out the side, especially if you have an access panel or have it out of the clock for sure. And let's just go ahead and do that. You don't want to unbend it. You just want to get it up in there. And you want to feed it on the side of the sprocket that does, that does not have teeth on it. And so it can be a little tricky, especially if you can see in there from the side. You can kind of get, get it pointed in the right direction. You know, maybe give it a little bit of a twist in the, in the direction you want it to, to, to fall. Because you want to favor the side that does not have the teeth. And then as you move it, you can reach in from the side and you can kind of push your wire down and, and then kind of give it a little pull. You'll be able to reach in there and see it comes out. And then you want to make sure that you feed up more and then give it a little shove back down because you, you want it to go all the way down and then out the bottom. And so now I have my hook down there. But I'm not on, I'm not on the proper place of the sprocket. So let's take a look at that, what it looks like from the side. So here you see I'm not, I'm not on the sprocket teeth. I'm on that side with, that doesn't have these teeth. I'm on this side. And you want to always do that. And mind you, the center one that, that switches. This is the bit that looks like on both outer sides with the center. The teeth are uh, pointing out at the face of the clock rather than the back of the clock. So once you, you kind of peek in from the side, you just lift, lift it up and hook it on there. And, and now when you pull through, you're going to pull in that direction that it needs to ratchet and the chain will grab. So let's go back to the front. Because we've taken off both sides of the chain, it doesn't really matter uh, which side of the chain we do. We just want to hook it on there, let it drop. Give it a pinch so it's not going to really come off easy. Because if you yank on this a lot, this stranded wire will just flex and come open on you. And uh, as we pull up, of course, we're going to be raising that chain with our hand. So let's come back over here and we start to pull through and because it's stranded it, it'll flex easy and we want to make sure we don't pull off or hook up anything on it see and see now how those chains locked in kind of look from the side and make sure you've done that notice up here I'm, a, I'm about to pull I'm about to pull off on it so if I really wanted to be anal I could have put a little piece of tape around this um, so that I don't have that problem. You don't want that to, uh, to do like it did for me. Um, so yeah, put a little piece of tape on it too before you hook it up. That way you're not likely to do what I just did, which is, uh, which is have it to where it could come off. And so now it should ratchet down nice and even. And we'll come back to the front. And we can see we have our chain. Okay, and we don't want to go too far because, of course, you're going to put a weight on it. So go down to about halfway. So now you're about 50-50 on the, on the chain length now. And now we can put our tabs back on. So let's show that real quick before we do the center one. So we, here we are putting the tabs back on. Make sure the one with the hook goes on the, in, on the outsides of the clock, or certainly the one where you pull on it, it doesn't ratchet because that's the side the weight's going to hang from. If you hung it on the other side, it'll just ratchet right to the floor. We've got uh, that extra link in there. We hook it in there. And now we just got to simultaneously bend them. So I grab it tight there and let it hang. And if I can get it on camera real good, I'm going to grab it, and I'm just going to torque it back nice and center. And then you don't see a gap in there anymore. So because you don't see a gap in there, it's going to hang just fine. And this hook side is on the correct side. Now we just repeat that with the tab side, and I won't show that. Yeah, it ratchets, it ratchets this way, so we want to feed our wire the opposite way so that we can pull it up. So it would be the same as the way we would do the, uh, the right side. Uh, now, once again, you want to start with it in the shape. You want to make sure you stay um, near the back of the clock because you want to stay over top of the arbor um, you don't want to get hung up in the gears near the front inside. So we'll try and stay near the back this time. And if you look in from the side, you can see uh, a little bit um, and be careful not to get hung up in anything. Now, if you saw the clock servicing video, I had made little hooks 
to service uh, things inside the clock and that comes in handy again because we can feed this in from the side and kind of help our wire get down underneath other things as we roll it around we don't want it to get hung up in other in other uh, underneath other arbors we want to get under just the one arbor and that can be kind of tricky uh, one of the tricks is staying clear staying clear of everything just get on the arbor of the center shaft because then you're not up there getting hooked up on anything and I can just see inside that it's coming down as I roll it and I think I got it yes okay so now I'm not I'm in there on both sides but I'm not over the sprocket the chain sprocket so I have to lift up hook the chain sprocket now I can look in from the side over here and I can see I'm on the chain sprocket this time I'm going to use a little piece of tape just to make sure that the uh, the little hook here on the on the on the wire stays closed. So essentially that little piece of tape will just keep it from falling off as it goes up around that sprocket. Now I can pull the correct chain here. Pull this other side of my my uh, yellow wire and make sure it catches and pulls it down. There we go. Get about halfway, and I can put my hook back on, and that's done. I repeat that one more time here. Come to think of it, the right hand one is a little bit tricky. Uh, I've never really paid attention, but uh, because I always do this outside the clock, but especially if this is inside your your clock case, the little it's a little more tricky. So start with it already hooked up and taped, uh, because there's two sprocket, there's two uh, gear trains in there that kind of cross. They they're not above each other like the other ones where you could just loop this wire over. They're crossed meaning you got to go in correctly right away. You got to thread the needle a little bit. So that's what makes this, this one on this, on, certainly on this clock harder. So what I do is uh, from the bottom, I just feed, make sure I get up and out the side like that. And, and then I can turn it around. And then looking in from this side, I can poke it like a needle through the top of the actual uh, chain sprocket. And, and then by poking it through, and I'll probably get in the way of the camera doing it, kind of see there, uh, poking it through, I can look from either side and I can kind of see that I'm, I'm over top of the sprocket with the wire and I'm not going to get behind something and I can push it through a lot. And at this point, this wire right here would come in handy again um, in that I can reach up from underneath and hook that wire and pull it down through uh, by feeding up from the bottom and also looking from the other side. I can use this as sort of a hook to sort of grab it. There we go. And there, see, it came out. And now I should be able to make sure I'm over top of that sprocket. I'm not, I'm not on any gears and I can just pull, I can pull this up through and you can hear it ratcheting and it clicks right over the top. And there we go. We can uh, take the tape off and pull it through and we're pulling through the ratchet side and so we'll hang of course on this outside one we'll hang the weight on this outside one where it doesn't ratchet there that was a trick for that one see a trick for everyone well i hope that helped you uh, if you have a clock and you need to do the chains on them uh, that uh, this video is for you it's not really for my subscribed viewers uh, though i think some of them do like this stuff because they watch this because it's todd fun and this is fun for me and it's just fun to watch people do things sometimes uh, but most of the people are going to be finding this uh, video uh, because they need to do this job. And, uh, and that's, that's the vi this video is for you. So thanks for joining. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, hey, even subscribe. If, if you don't normally do clocks, but you like fun stuff, subscribe. It always helps my channel. Um, I guess that's it. Thanks for joining. See you later.